everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do our earthworm observation lab. But first, I'm going to find an earthworm. Now, if you want to do this along with me, you can go in an outdoor space and try to find one on your own. It's been pretty wet out in the area recently, so it shouldn't be too difficult. If you can't find an earthworm on your own or you just don't want to, you can just watch this video and complete your observations and inferences on your own. So I'm going to wear some gardening gloves and use a trowel, but if you just want to do this and wash your hands afterwards, that's fine as well. All right, let's get started hunting. All right, I'm going back to this back garden. And it's pretty shaded and wet back here. Worms like to hang out in this area. I'm just gonna find a space where I know there's some nice wet soil and I'm gonna start digging. Oh, here's one. All right, this one's kind of small. There he is. Oh, there's one. Come here, guy. There we go. All right, welcome to our earthworm observation and inference lab. Earthworms belong to the phylum Annelida. Annelids can be terrestrial, freshwater, or marine, and they vary in size from a few millimeters to over a meter. One of the cool characteristics about earthworms is that they have metamerism, or they have their body divided into several different parts or segments. So during this lab, we're gonna practice observation and inference and look at some of the many characteristics of organisms in this phylum, and you can see this guy's wiggling around, oh my goodness. Um, if you wanna do your lab using the earthworm in this video, you can, or you can go find your own in your own backyard. So what you'll need for this lab is obviously an earthworm or this video. You're gonna need some vinegar, or you can just watch the vinegar reactions in this video, some water, some Q-tips, and a paper towel or somewhere to put your worm. After that, you probably wanna wear either gloves or just use your hands and make sure you wash your hands after the lab. Now, before this little guy gets out of here, I want you to make three observations about the worm. Remember, an observation is something about its physical characteristic, something that you can observe with your five senses, and it's not an inference, so it's not something that you are guessing about the worm or predicting about the worm. So go ahead and using this video or your own worm, make three observations on your own work. If you're looking closely at your worm, you can see the segments that your worm is divided into. If you have your own worm, try running your finger up and down the skin. It may feel rougher in one direction, and that's because of the presence of tiny little hairs that help with the worm's sensory systems as well as movement. I think this worm is freaking out when I talk too loud near it. Watch as your earthworm moves. Describe its behaviors. How is it moving? Is it moving in one direction, or is it moving forwards and backwards? Now for the fun part. Take some water and hold your worm in between a moistened thumb and forefinger. Does it have any change in behavior this way? Describe any movements it's making. Now we're gonna put an obstacle in front of our worm. So I'm just gonna take this glass of water. What is the response of the earthworm to the obstacle? Now, if you're lucky enough to have two worms, bring your worm into contact with another worm. Now, if you have a Q-tip, take your Q-tip, moisten it with water, and draw a line near your worm. How does it react? Now, putting your earthworm in a new area of your paper towel, do the same with a line of vinegar. Be careful not to touch the worm with the vinegar. Oh, it does not like that. Can 
Can you infer what the anterior or head and posterior or tail ends of the earthworm are? Once you're done with the earthworm, be sure to dispose of it in a moist soil area outside. When you're done with that, go ahead and go back to your lab and provide the final responses to the prompts on the lab sheet. Thanks everyone.